That is the most important part of gardening, is getting the soil prepared properly. So when I lived up in Michigan, we had soil, but I still added minerals and microorganisms to the soil because it's lacking. The government did a study in 1936 that proved that the United States soil all across the nation was depleted in minerals. And they said that the food that we're now eating coming from it is starving us and it can't be remedied until the soil is brought back into proper mineral balance and it has not gotten better. So as a matter of fact, the food in the grocery stores is very depleted of minerals. And as we talked about earlier, many of them have many toxins on them that cannot be washed off, cannot be peeled off, and cannot be scrubbed off. So, here in Florida, it's even more important because we have beach sand that we live on. So what we do here is we replace the sand with good soil, and then we add our products. Now, I gotta back up just a little bit. When I moved down here, you know, I've been an organic gardener my entire life. I've been growing food. I've helped a lot of people grow food because I've been an organic edible landscape designer for over 25 years. Well, when I moved down here and I started gardening, my first two gardens were miserable failures. And I went, what's going on? Because <laughs> I can garden. So I had to figure out how to do it. And that's what I teach. Because then when I figured it out, I started growing gardens. And I purchased a, a little peach tree that was shorter than me, a little skinny thing. And I planted it the way I'm gonna tell you right now. And within a year and a half, it was 12 foot tall, five foot wide, and I harvested well over 800 peaches that were juicy, delicious. I think they were the best peaches I've ever eaten in my life. And I started inviting people to come over and see, see my gardens. And they'd come and they'd look and they'd go, you can't grow gardens like this in Florida. You must be using magic. And I heard that a lot because I had various fruit trees, I had vegetables, herbs, and they were lush and beautiful and delicious. So people started asking me, you need to you, please teach us how because we don't know how. And so they convinced me to open up my company again because I had closed it down when I moved down here. So the number one product are minerals. So. These are minerals mined from an ancient seabed out in Nevada. So it's God-made, it's not man-made. And it's rich, full of minerals, and it's balanced. So it's very, very healthy. Now, if you go to any garden center except for mine, and you ask the person in there that you want some fertilizer for your vegetable garden, they're gonna sell you a bag that says 10-10-10 or 10-20-10. What that means is if it's 10, 10, 10, it's equal parts nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and those are man-made from petroleum products. It's not something a plant would ever ask you for. And if you do your research, and I've done a lot of research, it, it all comes down to they need 90, 91, or 92 minerals in the soil to be healthy. That's why this is so nice, because it's mined and it's all natural. So when you give this, you put this into your soil and the plants take it up, it's a whole food for the plants. They do phenomenal, they love it. Then you know how we have the good bacteria in our gut and that's our immune system? Well, we're supposed to get that from the soil as well. Have you ever eaten fresh blueberries or fresh grapes right off the vine? Well, remember that little silver sheen on the outside? Yeah, well, those are the microorganisms. So we're supposed to get everything we need from our food. So, because, now, minerals are elements essential for life. Essential, and that's all life. Human life, plant life, bug life, every life. And these microorganisms are alive, and they can't live without minerals. So if you're just trying to grow in beach sand where there's no minerals, you're probably not going to have it, any, if very many, microorganisms. So, this contains all the families of all the microorganisms that are supposed to be in the soil. So when you add these two together, you create a living community 
with the worms, the plants, the insects, all working together, the microorganisms, so that you don't get bugs, you don't get disease, you don't have problem plants. So the first two years I was here, these are the two products that I used. And we do sell it in two different sizes, that's why you see two containers. But this is what I used. And then people were coming to me and going, you know what the problem is, it's tomatoes. I can't grow tomatoes, they die, um, they'll produce two or three fruits and then they're done. What can I do? So I said, hmm, let me do some research on that. So I did some research and I found out that tomatoes want a pH of 6 to 6.5. They also want a lot more calcium than is in the soil. And then they're also very susceptible to a microscopic critter in the soil called nematodes. So when the nematodes find an unhealthy tomato, they go right into the roots and they start colonizing and the roots get all swollen. It sucks the energy out of the plant and it dies. So I said, okay, now what? How? I know what tomatoes want and what they need, but what do I do? So somebody called me up one day and says, hey, I've got 1,800 pounds of back on them. Would you like to buy it? And I went, uh, let me get back to you on that, because I wasn't sure. So I did some research on back guano. Amazingly enough, it lowers the pH of the soil, it kills the bad nematodes, and it has lots of calcium. So I called him back and goes, yeah, send it to me. And so I started putting this into the soil for tomatoes, and it was amazing. I took a tomato plant over to one of my customers' house, and it was, it was a dwarf one, and it was about this big when I planted it. First of all, I used all three of these products in her soil. And at the end of the month, that, that dwarf tomato was now this big, this wide, and it had like six or eight ripe tomatoes on it. It was gorgeous. And the same happened with the rest of the tomatoes I planted. I'm going like, this is good stuff. So then I was at my house and I needed to plant some uh, cauliflower and broccoli plants. So I, I'm out in the garden and I'm digging my holes because I already have good soil because I prepared it. And uh, I'm getting ready to plant the cauliflower. And I go, you know what? I want to see what this does for cauliflower. So I dug my holes, I put in this and this and I gave them some of this, just a tablespoon or two. And then when I got done planting all that, I got busy and had to do something else. So I had to come back about a week later to get my broccoli in the ground. Well, what I noticed was that the cauliflower was quite a bit bigger than the broccoli. And they were the same size when they started. So now the cauliflower is big. And I, I said, it's just been in the ground. It's getting watered and taken care of, so it's growing happy. So I planted the broccoli and I said, no, no, no. I'm going to see what happens. You're not getting it. They got it, but you're not. So a week later, I checked on it. Well, the cauliflower is still significantly bigger. I went, OK. And a week later, I go back and check, and, the, and it's still growing bigger. And these guys are still smaller. And now they're going, please, please, please give us some of that. And I couldn't stand it anymore, so each one of them got a tablespoon of this. But what's interesting is the cauliflower produced heads. And I've got a beautiful picture of me with a basket full of cauliflower, some in my arms, and I just had tons of cauliflower, and the broccoli wasn't even ready yet. And normally I harvest broccoli before cauliflower. So I went, wow, this is good stuff. So I've been doing a lot of experiments at my garden center and all of them prove that when you put these three together, it's amazing. So that's what we started out with. First, I was just selling this for the first year and a half, and then we added this product line about a year, year and a half ago, and my gardens were doing great. So then, now I had been hearing about a product called Biochar for a couple of years but it wasn't available and it was like something that people were doing with specialties. Like one guy I know takes old abandoned contaminated mines out west and he uses biochar to, to decontaminate it and make it usable again. So I've been aware of it but I didn't know much more than that about it. And then last May 
almost a year ago, a friend of mine introduced me to someone else who is now a very good friend of mine who spent four years and quite a bit of money and time to develop how to make biochar now. The history of biochar, bio means living and char means it's been burnt until it's charred, it's not wood ashes. So 6,000 years ago, the Mayan Indians down in Brazil used to take big pieces of property and they'd dig a huge trench, fill it with, with logs, put brush on top and burn it. And they would do the whole field. And at the end of about 10 years, they would have this field full of this beautiful black biochar. And so if you go down there, you can still dig and find pieces of the biochar. So it lasts a long time. So Chris is my friend and he brought me down eight pallets full of biochar. And we've done experiments with that as well. So we've done some experiments with just one, two, and three compared to one, two, and three, and four, which is the biochar. And it's amazing. They grow bigger, stronger, and healthier, and they taste better when you use all four. So, if you remember at the beginning, I said people, people would say to me, you can't grow gardens like this in Florida, you must be using magic. Well, that's why we call our products Garden Magic. This is Garden Magic number one because it's the most important one. This is Garden Magic number two because it's the second most important one. And then garden magic number three. This is a mixture of the bat guano, worm castings, and blood meal. Phenomenal, I call this super food for the plants. So when people come to me and they wanna plant trees, I always tell them they need one bag of garden magic number four, the biochar per tree, because it holds five times as much moisture as regular soil. It has a lot of carbon in it, which is good for the plants. And as it's made, getting rid of, you know, burning the, the logs, because it's made from wood chips, logs, and stuff that would be going to the landfill, it actually keeps the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And I'll tell you why. So when a plant is normally growing, it's, it's growing, it's absorbing the carbon dioxide, releasing oxygen, using the sunlight, the photosynthesis to create food. And then when it lays down and dies, that carbon dioxide goes back into the atmosphere. Well, when the biochar is made, it keeps the carbon dioxide in the soil. So that's good because the plants want more carbon, so it prevents air pollution. It's keeping the logs and the wood chips and stuff from the landfill, so it's good for the land as well. And then because it helps hold extra moisture and nutrients, it's just a phenomenal product for the, for the soil as well as for the gardens. So you'll water less, you'll lose, you, you will use less nutrients, and the products will go much, much better. So those are the four products that we sell. And we are a complete landscaping service. So if you want us to come, and put your garden in, we will do it. I will teach you all aspects of gardening. So if you want to do it yourself, you can. And then we have these wonderful products. And the plants that we sell are very specific to Central Florida. So that's fruit trees, vegetables, and herbs. So I want you to come over and see my garden center soon and get a tour of my gardens. You'll get to taste food from my gardens as well as get a glass of fresh iced tea. So I hope to see you soon. Thank you.